So that should be recording. Now, the purpose of this meeting is just to get started on the course. This is an online course, so we'll never have a meeting except these Zoom meetings. And so the purpose here is to see how to get started. So all the work for the course will be done on Lon Kappa at loncappa.msu.edu. So we'll look at that in a minute. One of the things you'll find there is the syllabus, which shows you what you have to do during the course. Things like the grading scale, the exams, <laughs> the resources. There'll be a reading quiz and a problem set each week. The reading quiz is short. Uh, it's just uh, probably half an hour or so, just to make sure that you have looked at the chapter. And then the problem set will be long, maybe five hours, maybe eight hours, homework problems that you have to work out based on the chapter. <laughs> and there'll be one of those each week uh, I'll mention the textbooks. In fact, why don't I look at the textbooks now? You probably already have the textbook, but <coughs> the publisher <coughs> is Cognella, the name of the publisher. The name of the book is Physics, no, it's Essential College Physics, Volume 1. You can buy it in the local bookstores. Uh, I think the local bookstores had some used copies. So if you want to get a new copy, they'll have new copies. If you want to get a used copy it'll be cheaper just kind of look through it and make sure it's not all marked up there's also an online version of the book which is probably not very useful to you you probably don't want the online version you want the printed version so you can get it in the local bookstores or you can try to buy it directly from the publisher I'll show you how, if you haven't already got it, you go to this website, cognella.com. You'll see this. It says, find your course materials. Where do you go to school? Well, let's type in here, Michigan State University. Select that. Search by professor, course name. Well, the course name is PHY231C. Now they have a mistake here. They have the name of the instructor from last summer, Richard Halstein. Ignore that. But select this, ignore Richard Halstein. Physics 231C, Essential College Physics Volume One. And then you come down here and you have um, choose a format. You can get an ebook. You can get an ebook which you can use perpetually, or you can get a paperback. What you want is the paperback. So you choose the paperback. Uh, and add to cart here. So here it is. Here's what it looks like. It's essential college physics, 
The authors are Andrew Rex. Oops, I lost it. Let me go back. Andrew Rex. I uh, can't quite read that. Someone must be. Wolfson. <clears throat> That's what it looks like. That's what the cover looks like. Central College Physics. It says, see, it says here, volume one. You don't want volume two. Volume two is for the second semester of the course, Physics 2. And the one you want is second edition. So this is what the second edition looks like. The only one you can buy from the um, directly from the publisher will be the second edition. So it's this edition. They have this also available in the local bookstores. Now, they also have the first edition available in some of the local bookstores. You don't want that. Don't get that. And, you know, you will also get a partial ebook for free. So if you click on go to checkout, I don't know if you need an account, but anyway, you may have to create an account here. I guess you have to have an account because you have to give them your shipping address. So you have to create an account and give them your shipping address. Um, you can view the details. What will you get? Well, you get a paperback and also you'll get a 30% partial ebook because it may take a week for the paperback to get here. Uh, if it takes a while for the paperback to get here, you won't have it to use, and you need to start using it today. But you'll have the partial ebook, so you'll have the ebook to use until the paperback comes in the mail. Now, of course, a lot of people have already ordered it, so they already have it. But if you haven't got it yet, or if you added the course late, um, order the paperback, and you'll get the ebook free and then you'll have something to read for the next week or two while you're waiting for the paperback all right so that's how you go about doing it um let's see you go to this well i should actually go back one step further you go to You can go to Cognella.com. And then click on students, buy your learning materials here. Click on that. That takes you to this. That's where you put in Michigan State University And then you search for physics 231C and it'll come back with the name Richard Halstein. That's that's an in, that's an error on their part, but just ignore that. All right, so you've got the book. Now let's look over these various things you need for the course. All right, so I'm going to log on to loncapa.msu.edu and show you some of the things that are there so you'll be familiar with it. The syllabus, the content, the supplemental content will also be uh, important. So let's go on now and 
log on to Lon Kappa. So I go to Lon Kappa dot MSU dot EDU. You log on, you put in here your email address and your password, and you type hit sign in. And if you're since you're enrolled in the course, it'll give a give you a list of courses and you click on the one you want to look at. We want to look at physics 231C fall 2023. So I select that. Then that takes me to the content of the course. So here it is. Actually, this shows everything. You'll only see a smaller amount. You'll see what's been prepared already for the students. So you'll get the result for a student role. Show you what that is. Ah. Okay, you'll get this. So this is just the start of the course, and then we'll fill this up below with the rest of the semester. Now, you know, at the, the first thing you click on here is just a list of things to do for the week. So here are the things you have to do for the week. It's actually not the week. It's from August 28th to September 4th, or actually September 8th. There's a Zoom meeting. Okay, we're doing that. So we've done the Zoom meeting. There's some reading assignments, syllabus and chapter one. There's a reading quiz due Friday this week. So it's not really a quiz. It's not, it's not a timed test. It's just a short number of questions. That's due, that's open right now. So you can start working on it now, uh, but it'll be due to the end of Friday. You could do it tonight if you've already read the chapter. And then there's the weekend and Labor Day and then Tuesday, the end of Tuesday, the problem set is due. So, you know, over the weekend and, you know, Thursday, Friday, the weekend, you have about a week to work on it, about seven days to work on it. Do the problems and problem set number zero. That'll be due Tuesday. There's something called the pretest, which is due Wednesday. And you can read about the pretest in a in the syllabus. And then there'll be another reading quiz. I guess it's the next it's a week from Friday. Here are a couple of announcements. So that's this list of tasks to do. Here's the syllabus. So here's the syllabus. It's got the name of the instructors. There are two instructors, description of the course, help room, information about the exams, information about the grading, week by week list of readings. So the textbook has I guess it's 14 chapters. The semester is 14 weeks long. So we'll, we, we'll read a chapter every week. And this kind of lays out the dates for each chapter. And there's a corresponding problem set for each chapter. Then it's got the information about the textbooks, Rex and Wolfson, volume one, second edition, there's a second textbook. They have it in the bookstores. So here's a second textbook. You might be able to order that from, from amazon.com or something like that, but it's getting a little late. So probably just get it at one of the bookstores. Uh, we're not using D2L at all. You'll need a scientific calculator. 
It doesn't have to be a graphing calculator. If you have a graphing calculator and you know how to use it, you can go ahead and just use that. Or the kind of recommended standard calculator is Texas Instruments TI-30X, which you can get at any of the bookstores for about $20 or so. A scientific calculator, not just a simple calculator, but one that has scientific functions like trigonometric functions. You probably had one from high school. You could probably still use that. There's optional folder, which has slides and videos for each week. That's optional. I wouldn't find that very useful, but some students do find it useful. So you can click on that and see what it looks like. You know, here's chapter one. It's pretty long. It's not the same as the textbook. It's easier, it's easier to study the textbook than it is to study these slides and short videos, but some students like these slides instead. So that's where you find the optional slides and videos. There's some information here about information in the supplemental content. So we'll look at that. There's an FAQ folder, which answers questions about the course, and a hints folder, which provides hints for the homework problems. Also, I guess there are notes for the Zoom meetings. So that's just information. Now, here's the first assignment. This assignment will be due Friday this week, Friday, September 1st. If I click on that, what I see is, you know, here's that expanded out. It's got a few questions. It's got about, looks like about eight questions. It's got some information. And then it's got a question, another question, three, four questions, five, six, seven, eight questions. These questions are from the textbook. If you don't have the textbook yet, then obviously you can't do these questions because it doesn't tell you what the question is. But if you look, if you click on this, that'll give you the questions. So those are the questions. And here's, for example, question problem 10. Well, I shouldn't show you the answer. Um, if you have a, if there's something you don't understand, you can submit a question to the discussion board. Then you'll get this little cartoon bubble here. This is the discussions. I believe the syllabus is wrong. I think I fixed that. I'm pretty sure I fixed that. But anyway, uh, if you if there's a question you don't understand something about the problem, you know, go to the problem. Here it is. Click on post post discussion, and type in a discussion like this. So you'll see these bubbles, which are examples where a student has asked a question about a homework problem. And then somebody, maybe another student, will see that question and answer it. And so you'll get a little help on the problems. It's always good on the problems to work with other students. And um, communicating with other students by the discussion board is a convenient way to exchange information with other students. Here's reading quizzes. Quiz zero, you saw it was pretty small, just eight questions, pretty short questions. Here's problem set zero, that's a bit longer. So this will take, that might take five hours to do those problems. You know, it's it's good to do the problem set spread out over several days. Don't try to do it all in the last day. 
just you know do a little bit Thursday, a little bit Friday, a little bit on the weekend. It's probably due Monday. This one's actually due Tuesday because Monday is Labor Day. Here's the pretest. A pretest. It's not open yet, but it'll open Friday. And it's not due until. So th this will open. Let's see. What did it say? It'll open Friday, September 1st. And it's due Wednesday, November 6th. So you've got several days to do it. It's a 70 minute timed exam. You have 70 minutes to do it. You can't you can't start it, stop it, and then come back the next day and finish it. You have to do it all in one 70 minute sitting. So don't try to work on it until you have a full 70 minutes to, to spend on it. Um, that'll also show you how we're doing the online course, the online exams. And you know these are the first. These are the first. Well, I guess it's one, two, three assignments, and then there'll be more assignments. Now, that's the main content that you get when you click on contents. There's also an important place in the in the file folder or in the file cabinet called supplemental content. So here's supplemental content. It has various things. For example, it has the preface from the textbook because there's a question about the preface. If you don't have the textbook yet, you can't answer that question. Well, you can look at it here. So there's the preface to the textbook. You can read about it. That'll help you answer that question. How much time should a student spend on Physics 231C? Here's the hints folder. So there's some hints for, for chapter one. So here's some problems from chapter one and some hints. If you are stuck on, a, you know, try to do the problem without the hints. But if you're stuck on the problem, then take a peek at the hints and see if you can find out what you should be doing. There's an FAQ folder. Read through these, how to contact the instructors. How are your grade be determined? How to ace physics 231C. How to use Lon Kappa. FAQ seven and eight are how to use Lon Kappa. So read through those. If you, well, of course, a lot of students have used Lon Kappa before. If you haven't used Lon Kappa before, it'll take you a little while to learn how, but not very long. It's pretty easy to use. But you know, if you want a little advice on how to use it, um, Bon Kappa will tell you if your answer is correct or not. And if it's wrong, you can go back and try again. You have a finite number of tries. Or here's FAQ8. I don't know how to use Lon Kappa. What should I do? Well, here's a longer description of how to use Lon Kappa. In particular, how to input numbers and units, which will be the answers to the questions. So read over FAQ number eight if you're not if you're if you haven't used Lon Kappa before. Uh, let's see. Again, if I go to supplemental content, there'll, there'll be some notes for the Zoom meetings of a weekly Zoom meeting. Oh, this is the first part of the second textbook. You might not have the second textbook. You can get it in the local bookstores. There'll be some readings from the second textbook. So if you don't have the textbook yet, order it or go to the bookstore and buy it. And uh, if it's gonna take a little while to get here, well, then you can read the first few chapters here. All right, so that's everything on Lon Kappa. And that throughout the semester is where you'll get all the, 
you know, even the even the exams will be there. Of course, the exam's not ready yet, but anyway, uh, even the exams will be there. That's where you'll do the exams. All right, so any questions about using Lon Kappa? Let's see, if you want to ask a question, you could just uh, type a question in the chat or you could just unmute your microphone and speak up. Let's take a look at the chat. Can you see the chat? Uh, here are some questions from the chat. Is the second textbook necessary to get right away? Uh, yes, except as I showed you on the supplemental content, the first, I think it's the first two chapters are there. So uh, probably you won't, you can use those uh, until you can get a published copy. I can't really publish the whole textbook because that would violate the copyright. Mm -hmm. Library has it free online. How do you get access to the ebook? I don't know, but uh, it'll tell you how. You have to you have to uh, set up an account so that they know your address, so that they know where to send your your uh, book. When you set up that account, you probably also have to give them uh, an email address. And they'll probably send you information on the email address, how to get access to the ebook. Are the reading quizzes on the secondary textbook? No, the reading quizzes are on the primary textbook. All right, here's some information about, I guess, where you can get access to the textbook in the library. I don't think the library has a large number of copies. They have a limited number of copies, but uh, you can, I guess they're online. So maybe, I don't, I don't think everybody in the class can be reading the library's copy of the textbook at the same time. So you'll want to get your own copy and it'll be a lot more useful if you have the paper copy and not just an online copy, as you'll see. All right, so that's that. So we've been through all of this. Now, why are you taking Physics 231C? Um, most of the students who take this class are science majors or possibly engineering majors. And physics is the most basic science. So all the other sciences and all engineering technologies depend on physics. And that's why you're taking physics 231C because your major, you know, your major department has decided that it's necessary for all of their students, all of their students who are working towards a bachelor's degree, have some knowledge of physics. It's a long tradition at MSU. I don't know if you know the history of MSU. MSU started in 1855 as College of Agriculture. And it gradually changed over the years, got larger, for 30 years, from 1925 to 1955, the official name of this school was the Michigan State College of Agriculture and Applied Science. There was a period when it was just called MAC, Michigan Agricultural College. But starting in 1925, for a period of 30 years, it was the Michigan State College of Agriculture and Applied Science. And physics is the most applied science. I mean, think about the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution came from physics. It was physics that provided the knowledge necessary to build the machines that 
made the Industrial Revolution. Machines and also electricity. You know, in 1855, there was no electricity in, in East Lansing, at least no artificial electricity. Electricity wasn't didn't become a technology until about the turn of the 20th century. By 1925, electricity was found most places. Um, and, you know, that was part of the Industrial Revolution. Now, electricity is the subject of Physics 232. So we don't come to electricity this semester. But this semester is concerned with machines and the laws of motion. That was 1955. After a while, it was after 1955, it was called Michigan State University of Agriculture and Applied Science. Then in 18 in 1964, it just became Michigan State University. But it's a long tradition for MSU students to study sciences. And the physics is the most basic of all the sciences. So again, why are you taking physics 231C? Well, in most cases, some people just take it because they're interested in it. Some people, most people take it because it's required for some major. And there are approximately 150 students enrolled this semester. It's always the same every semester. It's about 150. These are some of the majors of the students taking physics 231 this semester. You see, most of them are, many of them are biology majors, like, like biology or biomedical laboratory science or entomology or microbiology or neuroscience. These are all sciences, but they're biological sciences. But even to understand biology, it's necessary to know something about physics. Now, some of these are not sciences. So for example, there's a major at MSU called construction management. And that's in the College of Agriculture. Doesn't really have anything to do with biology, really. But the construction management department requires their students, their majors, to take physics. Same way with packaging. Packaging is kind of an engineering subject. It's not in the College of Engineering. It's in the College of Agriculture. It's got its own big building. It's an important major. And the people, the, the professors in charge of packaging have decided that their majors need to know something about physics. So it's required for packaging. Kinesiology is another one. Kinesiology is like exercise science. That's kind of like biology, but anyway, kinesiology requires a, at least a semester of physics, maybe even two semesters. So there are a lot of students taking the class, and you should try to meet some other students and form a study group. That'll be a very good way to... Um, to work on the homework assignment and to answer questions you have is talk to other students. So I always recommend students that they work with other students. Don't just get other students to tell you how to do everything, but discuss things with them. And if you're working on the homework, discuss the homework with them. There's a good place you can go to discuss with other students. That's the Strosacker Center, room 1248, Biomedical and Physical Sciences Building. Uh, you could get a couple of students together and work there to go over some problems. There will also be some learning assistance there where you can get who you can get help from. All right. So, like I say, the fall semester is 14 weeks long. The chapter, the book is 14 chapters long. The first three chapters are on motion. The next three chapters are on force and energy. The next four chapters are on examples of the basic principles from the first six chapters. 
So the, the really important physics principles are the ideas of force and energy. And those will be chapters four and five. And now, in order to really understand those ideas, you have to see how they're used. So there'll be four, these four chapters to study examples which make use of the ideas of force and energy. And then the last part of the course is about atoms in motion. I mean, really the first first 10 chapters are about life-size objects in motion, or even could be astronomical objects in motion. Anyway, large objects, macroscopic objects. But the same laws of motion which describe macroscopic objects describe microscopic objects, i.e. atoms. So the last part of the semester is about how the principles of motion apply to atoms, because atoms move. This is called thermodynamics. All right, so that's kind of an overview. Here's a, we, here's a month of September. You know, here's here's today. We're doing the Zoom meeting. You should start reading chapter one. Here's the reading assignment. Or here's the reading quiz, which is due Friday. We'll have another Zoom meeting Friday to prepare for the first problem set. So at this second Zoom meeting, which will be Friday, I'll show you some hints on how to do the problems in problem set zero. The pretest is due September 6th. So this whole thing is September. But you don't have to do it September 6th. In fact, you're probably better off if you don't do it September 6th. You can do it anytime after September 1st. It's just that you have to have 70 minutes to work on it where you're not doing anything else. You're not, you're not bothered by other people. You're not uh, eating your dinner or doing anything except the pretest. So sometime when you have 70 minutes free, well, you could do it sometime during Wednesday because it's available through the end of Wednesday. And then uh, we go on to a reading quiz one, which is on chapter two, and the problem set on chapter two, and then we go on to chapter three, chapter four, and then there'll be an exam. So the first exam will be on chapters one, two, three, and four, really only on chapters two, three, and four, because chapter one is something quite simple that you've probably studied before, even either in other science classes or in high school. Um, when you read the book, take notes. So for example, this first chapter is called Measurements in Physics. It's got a list of things you're supposed to learn. On the first page of the chapter, you can look at what are you supposed to learn from this chapter? You're supposed to learn about the standard units, SI units, prefixes, numerical prefixes, converting units, well, something you've done before in science classes, probably back in high school, dimensional analysis, and significant figures. So as you're reading the chapter, take notes. You know, the chapter is about 25 pages long, it looks like, probably take about three hours to read the chapter. You don't have to do it all in one sitting. You know, you could do you could do the first couple of sections in the morning and the next sections in the afternoon. You could spread it out over two or three days. As you're reading, take notes. So you should have a notebook, which is for physics and nothing else. It's just a notebook for physics. And take notes or you could have a three ring, probably better as a three ring binder. 
And take notes as you're reading the chapter, because you're going to write down the important equations. Physics is all about equations. So you're going to write down the equations, and you'll need to use those equations when you do the homework problems. Otherwise, you got to go back and flip back through the chapter in the book, which is quite time consuming. So if you've already got the equations written down and you know what they are and where they are, it'll make it a lot quicker to do the homework. So here are some examples. What are the standard units? Well, the most important standard units for the next couple of weeks will be the units of mass, length, and time. The unit of mass is a kilogram. The unit of length is a meter. The unit of time is a second. So in the standard way, when we deal with a mass, we express it in kilograms. When we deal with a distance or a length, we express it in meters. When we deal with time, we express it in seconds. So those are the standard units. Now, there are, of course, powers of 10. And so that's the second topic, prefixes. So, for example, one kilogram is 1,000 grams. Chemists use gram as a standard of mass, but physicists don't use gram. They use kilogram. Kilogram is 1,000 grams. Or, you know, a meter is 1,000 kilometers. No, a kilometer is 1,000 meters. So a megameter, a million meters, 10 to the 6 meters, is 10 to the 3 kilograms. Or a microsecond is 10 to the minus 6 seconds. So you can always change from kilogram meters and seconds to other units like grams or kilometers or microseconds by multiplying by powers of 10. And those have these names like kilo and mega. Then there's converting units because these are metric units. Most of the world uses metric units, but the United States is sort of backward. The United States mostly does not use metric units. In everyday life, in physics, we use metric units. In science, we always use metric units. But in everyday life, we don't use metric units because we're very backward. We use the old English units like the mile well, you have to know how to convert between a mile and a meter. One mile is 1,609 meters. Or maybe we wouldn't want to measure time in seconds. Maybe we'd want to measure it in an hour. So what's an hour? You have to be able to convert between an hour and a second. One hour is 3,600 seconds. It's 60 minutes times 60 seconds gives... 3,600. And, you know, for example, we're going to be talking about motion and speed. Speed in everyday life is miles per hour. So that's 60 miles per hour. And a mile is 1,609 meters. And an hour is 3,600 seconds. So it's 60 times 1,609 divided by 3,600. That's the number. And the unit now will not be meters per hour, but miles per second, um, not miles per hour, but meters per second. So if you multiply out these numbers, 60 miles per hour is 26.8 meters per second. Dimensional analysis is a little more complicated. You'll have to read about that in the book. For example, speed is distance over time. So the dimensions of speed will be the dimensions of distance divided by the dimensions of time in standard units, that's meters per second. So meters per second is the usual unit for the standard unit for speed. And significant figures, you'll get some practice on this during the homework assignment. Physics is a mathematical science, so we're always dealing with numbers. And numbers are a little more complicated. For example, 1.00 is not the same as 1. 
mathematically, 1.00 is the same as 1. But in science, 1.00 is not the same as 1. Because if you had a measurement which was 0 .9, 0 0.999, you might write it as 1.00. 0.999 is not exactly the same as what, although it's pretty close. This use of significant figures will be important in Lon Kappa. In Lon Kappa, don't give the answer. If you do a calculation with your calculator and you've got some number with nine decimal places and you type that into Lon Kappa, it'll tell you, no, that's wrong use less significant figures. So you have to read that section on significant figures. This is all stuff which is pretty easy. I mean, this you probably studied in high school. So this is kind of just a warm up for the physics topics which start next week. Here are three problems which are on the problem set. That's the problem set. Where's that calendar? That's the problem set, which is due Tuesday, September 5th, called problem set zero. Here are three problems that you'll find in that problem set. A problem about the density of the planet Saturn. It's actually a problem taken from chapter one. What's the density of Saturn? Or here's one about a horse race. In 1973, the famous horse Secretariat ran 1.5 miles in two minutes and 24 seconds in the Belmont Stakes. Secretariat was the horse that won the Triple Crown back in 1973. What was the average speed? Okay, well, I have to know the definition of speed. Of distance over time. Average speed is the total distance divided by the total time. Now you want it in SI units. You don't you're not given the you're not given the information in SI units. So you're given the information in miles and minutes and seconds. So you have to convert the distance, 1.5 miles, into meters. And you have to convert the time, 2 minutes and 24 seconds, into seconds. 2 minutes and 24 seconds is 144 seconds. And you'll have to convert miles into meters. One mile is 1,609 meters. So, you know, work out the problem on a piece of paper in your notebook. Write down the solution to the problem in, on paper in your notebook before you even touch your calculator. And then once you've reduced it down to the numbers, you can plug those into your calculator and get the number. Uh, I'll go over this in, in the Zoom meeting Friday. Or here's another problem. This is a problem for the Flat Earth Society. Who measured the radius of the Earth? Who first understood that the Earth is a sphere? According to the members of the Flat Earth Society, the Earth is not a sphere. It's, it's flat. Well, that's not true. Who was it that determined that the Earth is not flat? Now, some people might say, well, it was Columbus. Columbus sailed, sailed west from... Spain, people said, be careful, Christopher, you'll fall off the edge of the earth. But Columbus knew the earth was round, not flat. So he knew he wasn't going to uh, fall off the edge of the earth. But he wasn't the first person to realize that the earth is a sphere. That was known long before Columbus. That was known at the time of the philosophers of ancient Greece. You'll be reading this book about the history of physics called Unifying the Universe. And it'll explain how Aristotle argued that the Earth 
must be a sphere. And that was long before Columbus. That was that was before the year zero. You know, the, in the BC era. Well, okay. Once you know it's a sphere, how how large is it? Who measured the radius of the Earth? Well, that was a man named Eratosthenes. Again, a member of the civilization of ancient Greece. He actually lived in northern Africa. He lived 276 to 194 BC. So we're talking about, you know, we're talking about long, long ago. And he had a measurement of the radius of the earth. And that's what problem 186 is all about. So I'll go over hints for these problems. I'll go over, the, I'll explain these problems on the Zoom meeting Friday. But anyway, that's to give you an idea of what kind of problems you'll have to do. Now let's see if there are any questions on the chat. The library should have eBooks. Are the reading quizzes on the secondary textbook? No, they're on the primary textbook. Uh, here are some of the library locations. Does the reading quiz and the problem set cover the preface or chapter one? Uh, there's one question about the preface and there are about, I don't know, 20 questions altogether. So, you know, there's one question about the preface on the reading quiz. All the rest of the questions are about chapter one. Are the Zoom meetings mandatory? No, only if you want to get a good grade. <laughs> no, I mean, the Zoom meetings are supposed to help you uh, get an idea of how to do the problems, but they're not mandatory. I mean, I'm not going to take role or anything like that. I don't see any other questions on the chat. Anybody want to just ask a question verbally? Just unmute your microphone and speak up. Will most of the Zoom meetings be recorded then? Because I work during the times, like I'm at work right now. The Zoom meetings will be recording. It will okay, be recorded. Cool. The recordings will be put on a YouTube channel. Um, the Zoom meetings for this course, not in the first week, but in the later weeks, will generally be um, Fridays. Well, this week's a little weird because of it's the first week of classes, but I guess all the rest of them this semester are Fridays. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? How deep do the topics go? Is it similar to AS levels? What's AS? I don't know what's meant by AS. There's a question on the meeting chat that says, how deep do the topics go? Is it similar to the AS levels in the British system? Ah, I don't really know the British system. It's, it's a higher level, let, let me put it this way. It's a higher level than high school physics. It's sort of comparable to advanced placement high school physics. So some high schools have an advanced placement course where students can take an exam at the end of the course and may get credit where they get credit for physics 231 from taking an advanced placement course. It's kind of at the level of advanced placement physics. It's a little bit higher level than advanced placement. The big thing about physics 231 is that it doesn't have any calculus. So I don't know what the British system would be like, but the British system is a little higher level than, than the physics, than the uh, American system. And of course, calculus was invented by British people like Isaac Newton. So they probably study calculus. This course will not have any calculus. 
It has some ideas of calculus, but it doesn't really have any calculus. Uh, so that means it's a little lower level than, for example, the introductory course for engineering majors. So it's it's called hmm. introductory physics. You know, it's called introductory physics. So it's an introduction. If you look at the textbook, it's you know it's fourteen chapters of introductory subject subjects. You know, fairly fairly elementary. You know, force, energy, thermodynamics, and so on. So, um, yeah, some some of these topics you may have studied in a chemistry course. So I would say, well, the main thing is the prerequisite is algebra, algebra and trigonometry. So as far as the mathematics is concerned, it will make use of algebra and trigonometry. And I think you can get, you can kind of gather what level it's at by just reading over some sections in the textbook and in the secondary textbook as well. Any other questions? Well, okay. Uh, the Zoom meetings will usually take about an hour and we've used up an hour. So I'll end the Zoom meeting. Let's see, I wanna stop the recording. Where do I stop the recording?